Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to get back to doing a little bit of machining and fabrication. I realize in my last few videos it's been about programming and CNC in the uh, x-axis on the uh, on the surface grinder and while I'm getting a lot of comments on those videos very good comments I appreciate every one of them uh, giving me a lot of pointers I'm not getting the number of views that I normally get on the videos on this channel so there's there's not a whole lot of interest in them it doesn't appear however those that are interested seem to be very interested and like I say are making a lot of good comments but today I want to uh, do a little bit of machining and fabrication this is the indicator for the z-axis on the surface grinder as you dial it uh, this little uh, line on the front of this indicator uh, tells you how many thousandths you're feeding in or out on the z-axis Here's a couple of pictures of it in place. The first one is, of course, from the front. And as you can see, the uh, little black line is uh, the indicator for the dial on the uh, Z-axis handle. And then this picture is from the side where you can see what I'm wanting to replicate today. Now, yes, this is leading up to some more CNC. And I'm going to see if I can CNC the z-axis in conjunction with the x-axis on the surface grinder but what we want to do today is replicate this bottom part of the uh, dial indicator this is the indicator mark this serves to also hold the bearing in place for the shaft that that handle is on now we don't need to worry about this boss on the top up here, but what we need to do is just make the circular form of this, drill and bore it to the shaft size, not this large diameter that the handle fits in. But this serves to hold the bearing in place to keep, when, when that crank handle is turned, uh, if the bearing is not held in place, instead of the table moving, the handle comes out so what we're going to do is make a round version of this uh, as a bearing holder and what I'm going to do uh, is start with this square piece uh, I don't have any round stock two inches that's what I uh, that's the diameter of this piece but I'm going to start with this piece of a uh, uh, flat bar put it in the mill I've got the approximate center found now I'll put it in the mill and drill and ream this hole to uh, one thousandths less than a half. That should be a nice fit over that shaft. It doesn't have to be a, a snug fit, but I want to keep any as much dust out as possible, so I'm going to make that a pretty close fit. So let's turn over to the mill now. All right, before I drill this, like I say, I found the approximate center here. And hopefully you can see in the camera, I've scribed a little bit larger than the two inch diameter that, I, that we're going to want to turn this to. So let's put it in the, uh, put it in the mill now. And I've got this simple little pointer here. And we're going to locate that on that approximate center punch that I made. All right, that's, that's plenty close for what we're starting with here. We got plenty of extra uh, material here if we don't line up exactly on the center there but we'll start with a, a pilot hole put 
the drill we're going to be using is 1 64th less than a uh, uh, than a half, 31 64ths. We're going to drill to that and then ring the size. Now this is a chucking reamer and it is one half minus one thousandth. All right, and as you've heard me say before, when I'm using a reamer, I like to get in and get out. I see a lot of folks pecking with a reamer, but you'll oversize your hole if you do a lot of pecking. So just get in and get out. All right. Of course, I'm going to take this over to the surface grinder and be sure that goes over the hole, over the shaft. And then I'm going to go over to the uh, bandsaw and remove a lot of this excess around the outside. We're at the bandsaw now, but before we start cutting that out, here's a couple pictures uh, of where this, where this plate is going, or this bearing retainer. This first picture here is uh, of the shaft that the handle mount, mounted on, and the uh, bearing that's up in the housing now. That's what we want to, to trap in place. The second picture is the uh, piece we just drilled and reamed. Uh, in place. I actually went back uh, the the thousandths less than a half was a little tight and this and that shaft needs to be able to spin freely in this hole. So what I went what I did was go back and realign this on the uh, on the uh, uh, mill and ream it to a thousandths over one half. So let's Let's cut this out now, uh, just outside of that parameter or that uh, mark, witness mark we made on here. Okay, a little bit warm, but there's, there's what we got. Now our task is to put this in the lathe and make it round. So I'll meet you over there at the lathe. All right, to hold this uh, somewhat odd shaped piece now, close to an octagon, but to hold that in the uh, lathe so that we can turn the outside diameter we're going to use what's called a two-piece expanding mandrel. This is tapered on the inside to the same taper as this pin. It will slide in and expand to hold the piece. So we'll put over, put the expansion, the expanding part in, the pin in, and then I'm just going to set it here in the vise and lightly tap it. And I think that's going to hold on there. If not, we can tighten it a little bit more, but we're not going to take heavy cuts with this. So what we'll do is take this, it's got centers in both ends, and set it up on the lathe to turn between centers. Okay, over on the lathe, we're going to take this pin and put it in the chuck with just a little bit of it sticking out. 
Then we're going to mount this drive dog on our expanding mandrel. It has a flat side over here that's meant uh, for the uh, set screw. So we'll put that pin, this pointed pin we put in, in one of the centers. tail stock in the other. Now this one of the jaws on the chuck will bump this leg on this uh, on this dog and make it turn. Alright, I'm going to have to tighten that just a little bit more. I'll come right back. Okay, I've got the mandrel a little tighter now. Let's see if this works better. This interrupted cut here, once we get past that, it should cut a whole lot easier. All right, I'll bring you back when we uh, when I get a little closer to the diameter, desired diameter. All right, we got smooth surface all the way around now. I measured that. That was 2.127. So I set that up on the DRO to get this other 127 thousandths off to give us our two inches. Okay, that was the last pass down the size. I want to chamfer this uh, inside edge here. I'm not going to chamfer this side yet because I want to put this in the lathe and thin it down just a little bit. It's uh, it's 375 thousandths now, and we only want about 340, 350 thousandths. It's a little too hot to handle. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take this drive dog uh, and mandrel out. I'll cool it off, take that out, and then we'll come back and thin this down a little bit. To hold this in the lathe flat so that we can take about 30 thousandths off of this thickness, I'm going to use my chuck spider. I've got different size feet for the back of this. I think that's 3 8 one. Yep, 3 8 one that's on there now. All right, that edge that I chamfered, I'm going to put that on inside pretty good snug and then give it a tap just to be sure it's seated down good now I'm gonna lock the uh, carriage down here and use the compound which I have set at zero degrees now so that it's parallel with the uh, with the spindle. I'll come up and touch off and set the zero. On the compound. All right, let's go in 
10,000. Another 10. And a final 10 more. Tell you what, I believe I can put a, a butter finish in that on. I'll take just another five thousandths and use the power feed, which, which is a whole lot smoother than my hand cranking in. Alright, that looks a whole lot better. Now, we got just a little bit of room in here. I'm going to see if I can get a tool in there and chamfer that edge. That's all it needed. Now all we got left to do is our bolt hole pattern. I was going to use one of my machinist applets that you've seen me demonstrate before where you can measure the distance between the holes well, you measure that distance, and then in that bolt hole calculator, you tell it how many holes, which is three here, and the distance between each holes, and it'll tell you what the diameter of the bolt hole pattern is. Now, the problem I ran into is when I went to measuring the distance between these holes, they were, it was not constant. There was as much as 40 thousandths difference between the three measurements. These two holes, these two, and these two. So chances are this was laid out with a template and not with a bolt hole pattern on a uh, mill or something like that. So let's go over to the surface grinder now and see how we're going to lay that out to match this. Now we could possibly try to hold that in place and center punch each one of them. But I think we've got a butter method over there. All right. <clears throat> Well, since these three holes are not symmetrical, in other words, the distance between them is not exactly the same, we're going to have to use transfer punches. But this method, I'll hit doing it from the front side, I'm just not sure I could hold this in the center of our workpiece. So we're going to use transfer punches, but we're going to use a different style. These will screw into each of these three holes. All right, what they are is just, they have a very fine point on this end down here. They will thread up into these holes. Now hopefully that hole is deep enough that I can screw this on in so that there's not a whole lot sticking out. Alright, that one's in there good and still got room for the wrench to go in. So I'll get the other two in. Alright, they look like they're all the same distance now. Now I put a witness mark on here and I'm going to turn that witness mark even with this screw on this side over here. Then I'll take this little piece of pipe or sleeve 
slide over it and hopefully I held it in place good enough yes I did I got three marks I just I don't quite have that bottom one let me line them up with those punches again I see what it is. I got that bottom one run in a little, a little deeper than the other two. Bring it out. As I rotate this now, I can feel when it drops in. Now I've got three good marks. So let's go back over to the mill and we'll drill out these three holes, which are 1032. Back around at the mill now, or using it as a drill press, and I got a workpiece with three distinct marks on there. And I'm going to turn, turn it such that each of the three marks are missing the parallels. Got a uh, V block in here as well. Let's see, I need to turn that just a little more. Okay, now let's use our pointer and line up again. And this is a clearance drill for 1024, which I believe, let me look right quick. 1364. Hindsight's 2020, but I probably could have gone with a little larger diameter. That is right on the edge. Of course, it was on that cast piece as well. There's no reason I couldn't use the larger diameter. All right, I'm going to get the pointer back in and do these other two holes, and then we'll meet back at the surface grinder for a quick recap. All right, now let's see if it fits. We got the hole with the witness mark. We'll turn it. I'll probably replace these screws right here with, these are straight slot screws, which I think are original. But I'll probably re replace those with socket head cap screws. All right. Let's see whether I can turn that by hand or not. Put the handle back on there just for a moment. Now that bearing retainer that we just made back here is going to hold the shaft in place will hold the bearing in place when we're coming out this way but when we go back in what's happening is the rod is going in the shaft and the table is not staying the table is not moving so what will happen when I come up with whatever pulley I'm going to use on this which it obviously won't be this one. But the distance between the pulley, whichever way I need to turn it to line up the belt, the distance between this and this bearing retainer, I'll make a bushing again, just that fits over this, that will ride against that, and that will keep the shaft from coming out in the other direction. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of uh, machining and fabrication and making this uh, bearing retainer here. I've got a ways to go before I uh, automate the Z-axis going in and out, uh, 
in line with the spindle. Got a ways to go on that yet, simply because it takes forever to get these pulleys. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this little video. Take care, and I'll see you on another one.